Hello, my name is David Wu. Welcome to the second episode of Moral Innovations, a concept that uh, I have developed over the last 30 years to address both uh, how we can make this uh, wealth gap uh, narrow, as well as reduce violence and make this world a better place. This is the second episode. Please look for the first episode and watch it before you watch this one. This is a table of content for both episodes. In the first one, I define knowledge and golden rule and what happened that leads up to the world that we have today. I will start with the world today here and then move forward with education and how we can uh, build a better community together in harmony. When we look at the world today, we know that 95% uh, of humans consists of monotheists, henotheists, and atheists. And they have fragmentation within the monotheist world in the Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, and Church of the East. For Muslims, there's the Ibadi, the Sunni, and the Shiite Muslims. And the henotheists are also getting more complex because of Shiite is not Hindu and not Muslim. Atheists are also getting more global with one belt, one road to replace the Silk Road. For 40 years, we have contributed $2 trillion a year profit to widen the, world, uh, the wealth gap together. And if you consider that we have about 8 billion people on Earth, $2 trillion divided by 8 billion, we are contributing approximately $250 per person to uh, widen the wealth gap every year. Or if we exclude the children, we are contributing approximately $400 per adult per year. And unless we do something about the oil prices, we are not uh, going to uh, be able to narrow the wealth gap or until the oil prices fall below $20 a barrel. This is a pictorial view of our world today. In the upper right hand corner, you can see that the, we have 7.7 .7 billion humans that consists of Christians, Muslims, henotheists, and atheists, and other. If you look at the left side of this uh, chart, this vertical bar is $2 per day per person, which is the poverty line today. And you can see that in the year 1800, the red area is the Asian, which is primarily the Indians and the Chinese. Uh, n uh, did not really uh, make two dollars a day, but it was a uniform, uh, a unimodal distribution uh, with one lump. By the time that we reach 1975, you can see that the, the Asians, uh, primarily uh, Indians and Chinese, have fallen way behind primarily because they have not recovered from the opium war. And there are a lot of people that were below the poverty line in 1975. In the last 40 years, if you look at 2015, we have uh, increased approximately 700 million Chinese in the last 40 years away from poverty. So this single mode uh, distribution for 2015 is a reflection of how the Chinese economic growth have moved about 700 million Chinese away from poverty and moved them to above the poverty line. If we look at the wealth distribution of the humans on Earth, this represents only adults and not everybody on Earth. We see that there are about 3.5 billion people in this section that have wealth of less than $10,000 Per, uh, uh, per person. And uh, the top of this pyramid, we have 34 million people that control approximately 45% of the global wealth. So 34 million people control 45% of the wealth and 3.5 billion people have less than $10,000 worth of wealth. It might be of interest for you to know that the, the Silicon Valley has approximately three to five percent of this 34 uh, million people. Another way to take a look at this is the fact that I just shared with you that we are actually contributing $400 a year to widen the wealth gap for the last 40 years. 
And if you multiply $400 a year by 40 years, you would actually be uh, accumulating $16,000 worth of wealth, which would be more than 3.5 billion adults around the world. That to me is something that I think that we can uh, think about. If we look at the federal estate tax uh, in the last uh, 100 years, this is uh, 1916 to today. Um, the blue line here represents the amount of exemption that is not taxed in the estate. And if we focus on the years 1976, $90,000 worth of estate value is not subject to tax. And if you look at the green line, which is the top rate of the estate tax, it was at 77%. But if you extend the green line for the rate and the blue line for the exemption, you see that in the year 2018, there is $11.18 million per person that they can exclude from a state tax, while the green line shows the rate, the top rate has declined from 77% to 40%. So by increasing the amount that is not subject to tax and decreasing the top rate of the tax, naturally and clearly increases the wealth gap within the United States. What is the change agent for uh, making the wealth gap or decreasing violence? Hope is a very, very strong and powerful agent for change. And hope can be delivered through faith, but it relies on trust, which can be addictive without truths. Hope can also be delivered through signs, which is closer to truth, and relies on facts of, or intuition to confirm, which also requires some intuition and beliefs. So they go hand in hand, and we need to make change happen through hope, keeping in mind that if we do not have hope, we lose rationality, and that is uh, one way to look at it is the, a number of uh, suicide bombers have increased substantially because they have essentially given up hope and become irrational about what they can do to help the world. What do you need to know? Uh, you need to know your community, uh, your employer, uh, industry, church, family, schoolmates, teammates, and you need to create your own knowledge in order to thrive in this world, and you have to work hard to add knowledge with skills. And we are familiar with uh, Malcolm Gladwell's uh, concept of 10,000 hours before you can pick up a skill. Another thing that you could do is to expand the community that uh, you are in by speaking multiple languages so that you can learn from other communities that speak a different language. And if you expand the world that you can participate in, you would have more things that you can uh, develop uh, your passion with. Now, you have to focus on global attributes if you want to seek long-term wins, which is what more innovation is about. Or you can focus on local attributes if you're looking for shorter-term wins within your lifetime. And you have to listen until you understand your community and then keep the golden rule in mind as you take action, which is absolutely critical. This is a pictorial uh, illustration of what we have just presented. This is Malcolm Gladwell's words on what the 10,000 uh, hours is about. This is uh, the, the 10,000 hour rule applied to music. And since we're communicating in English, I will tell you in this pie chart that we are 82% of the world do not speak any English. And if we're communicating in English, we're communicating only with 8.5% of humanity. But if you know how, uh, Chinese, for example, you'll be able to speak to more than double the population. You can speak to 28% of the population if you can also speak Chinese. What should you know? Uh, you need to seek knowledge by confirming your beliefs. Uh, these are some examples that uh, is important to me and what I have learned, and you need to pick your own examples which would formulate the foundation for your knowledge. I picked the ones about how in the year 1823, in a single Supreme Court case, um, every single Caucasian European explorer became landowners and every single Native American 
became tenants uh, in North America. And Amherst, which is the namesake for a Massachusetts town, a famous Massachusetts town, as well as a, a campus for the University of Massachusetts, was believed to be responsible for the first chemical warfare in North America when he distributed blankets infested with smallpox. And there's uh, 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 other examples in here that I'll illustrate with you. So we should not accept what we watch and read. We need to evaluate and, uh, uh, and verify. This is a pictorial illustration of the last slide. If you want to know more about the, uh, how the discovery doctrine that converts um, uh, the land to Caucasians and make uh, Native Americans tenants, this is a good uh, a book, a book, not the only book. If you want to know exactly what the Lord Amherst wrote about the uh, distribution of the uh, smallpox invested blankets, you can read this and the Burgundy words uh, to help you understand what he actually has written. This is a picture of uh, President uh, uh, Roosevelt's grandfather, a picture of uh, uh, the Black Panther, uh, Fred Hampton. Uh, this is uh, the Nobel Peace Prize uh, 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 originator, who is also a merchant of death. Uh, in 1953, uh, the CIA installed a, uh, the Shah of Iran as a dictator over a democratically elected president. Um, and in this slide in here, in this picture in here, you can see the full presidential elections that the electoral college, uh, electoral votes won the presidency, but they all lost by the popular vote. Note that the Trump's loss of three million votes was bigger than the cumulative total of all three of these elections here. This is uh, the optimal education that we think the child should have. The child should be creating their own knowledge and have the freedom to pursue their passion. The student would re rely on the schools and parents and maybe church and faith to teach them both the beliefs through morality as well as the hard skills like math and arts and science through innovation so that the child can pursue the passion going forward and realize their potential and that way they will gain their freedom. And how do we deliver this to them? These are the communities of age-appropriate education, including Montessori, Waldorf, Advanced Placement, International Baccalaureate, and others. And in time, these will become more innovative communities. This is a pictorial picture of uh, the different communities. This is uh, Maria Montessori. This is uh, Emil Moat, uh, uh, who started the first Waldorf school. This is the uh, grades 1 to 12 pedagogy of Waldorf school, advanced placement, um, international baccalaureate, and Confucius Institute. Who are the moral innovators? These are some illustrative examples from Gandhi to Zhou Enlai to Ye Qi Sun and uh, Martin Luther King and Fred Hampton, they are lifelong moral, moral innovators, and there are some midlife changers to moral innovation, like Buddha, Ashoka, and Bill Gates. They all listen and learn, and then act with the golden rule. These are the pictures of the moral innovators I just showed you, just Zhu Enlai, Ye Chi Sun, Martin Luther King, um, Gandhi, Fred Hampton, Ashoka, Buddha, and Bill Gates. And I know that there's no short-term solution to uh, uh, changing the world and making sure that um, uh, we reduce the wealth gap uh, and uh, try to reduce violence. But through education, I believe that there will be some more innovators out there as a group that can change the world going forward. Um, I'm very hopeful that uh, you have learned something about moral innovation. And a message that I want you to walk away from uh, this presentation is that you absolutely have to think about sustainability. And while immoral innovations can also, um, can also deliver freedom for the elite, it is not sustainable. And that is exactly what we're experiencing right now. I hope you understand this. And I want to thank the contributors uh, on the left and on the right over here. And please uh, uh, make connection with me about uh, what you would like to do uh, and uh, how I can help. Uh, my email is here and my website is here. Thank you very much and please have a good day.